O Lord, hear my voice, for I have called to you. Of you my heart has spoken. Seek his face. Hide not your face from me. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. You're very welcome to Mass today on the seventh Sunday of Easter. As we prepare to celebrate the mystery of Christ's love, let us acknowledge our failures and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously hear are our supplications, O Lord, so that we may believe that the Saviour of the human race is with you in your glory may experience, as he promised, until the end of the world, his abiding presence among us, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. One day, Peter stood up to speak to the brothers. There were about 120 people in the congregation. Brothers, the passage of scripture had to be fulfilled in which the Holy Spirit, speaking through David, foretells the fate of Judas, who offered himself as a guide to the men who arrested Jesus. After having been one of our number and actually sharing his ministry of ours. In the book of Psalms, it says, let someone else take his office. We must therefore choose someone who has been with us the whole time that the Lord Jesus was traveling round with us, someone who was with us right from the time when John was baptizing until the day when he was taken up from us, and he can act with us as a witness to the resurrection. Having nominated two candidates, Joseph, known as Barsabbas, whose surname was Justice, and Matthias, they prayed. Lord, you can read everyone's heart. Show us, therefore, which of these two you have chosen to take over the ministry and apostolate which Judas abandoned to go to his proper place. They then drew lots for him, and as the lot fell to Matthias, he was listed as one of the twelve apostles. The word of the Lord. My soul give thanks to the Lord. All my being bless his holy name. My soul give thanks to the Lord and never forget all his blessings. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so strong is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our sins. The Lord has set his sway in heaven, and his kingdom, kingdom is ruling over all. Give thanks to the Lord, all his angels, mighty in power, fulfilling his word. 
a reading from the first letter of St. John. My dear people, since God has loved us so much, we too should love one another. No one has ever seen God, but as long as we love one another, God will live in us and his love will be complete in us. We can know that we are living in him as he is living in us because he lets us share his spirit. We ourselves saw and we testify that the Father sent his Son, the Saviour of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him and he in God. We ourselves have known and put our faith in God's love towards ourselves. God is love. And anyone who lives in God lives in love, and God lives in him. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. I will not leave you orphans, says the Lord. I'll come back to you, and your hearts will be full of joy. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Holy Father, keep those you have given me through to your name so that they may be one like us. While I was with them, I kept those you had given me through to your name. I've watched over them and not one is lost except the one who chose to be lost. And this was to fulfill the scriptures. But now I am coming to you. And while still in the world, I say these things to share my joy with them to the full. I passed your word on to them and the world hated them because they belong to the world no more than I belong to the world. I am not asking you to remove them from the world, but to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. Consecrate them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world, and for their sake I consecrate myself so that they too may be consecrated in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. The seventh Sunday of Easter is also known as Communication Sunday, and the Holy Father, Pope Francis, as usual, issues uh, a letter to be read at all the churches on that particular day. But we have synopsized his letter because it is far too long. But I'll give you the gist of it. Dear brothers and sisters, on meeting Jesus for the first time, Nathaniel asked him the question, where do you live? Jesus answered, come and see. This short answer, we could say, is part and parcel of all authentic human communication. In order to really know the truth of the situation, we need to go and see it for ourselves, to spend time with people, to listen to their stories, and to confront reality, which always, in some way, surprises us. The crisis of the publishing industry risks leading to a reportage created in newsrooms in front of a computer and on social networks without ever hitting the streets, as it were, or meeting people face to face to research stories or to verify certain situations firsthand. For instance, the reporting on the Jerusalem situation at present is always going to be coloured by the person behind the camera. What side of the divide they come from? But having said that, journalists generally should not be mere spectators on events they are reporting on either, but should be motivated to go and see things for themselves that they would not see or know about. 
As I said, come and see were the first words that Jesus spoke to the early disciples when he asked two of them to follow him. Before the Apostle John wrote his Gospel, for instance, he was personally present at the events that he reports on, which had a big impact on his life and his teaching. That is how the Christian faith begins and how it is communicated, as direct knowledge, born of experience and not on hearsay. To report the truth, especially in hostile situation, also takes courage. We owe a word of gratitude for the courage and commitment of all those journalists and camera operators who often risk their lives in carrying out their work. Thanks to the efforts we know, for example, about the hardships endured by persecuted minorities in various parts of the world, damage done to the environment, which we can now see, injustice towards the poor, and many wars which would otherwise be overlooked by the main media. Thanks to the mass media, we have the opportunity to report what is taking place before our eyes, whilst at the same time the risk of misinformation being spread on social media and in print has become evident for everyone. Paper never refused ink is an old adage you may be familiar with. News and images can easily be manipulated for a number of reasons. It's not about demonizing the internet, but rather an incentive to greater discernment and responsibility for contents both sent and received through the internet. Nothing, however, replaces seeing things as first-hand in person. The words of Jesus, come and see, which we said, which he said to the first apostles are also very relevant for us. The gospel only comes alive in our day whenever we accept the compelling witness of people whose lives have been changed by their encounter with Jesus. The challenge that awaits us then is to communicate by encountering people where they are and as they are. We finish with Pope Francis's prayer. Lord, teach us to move beyond ourselves and to set out in search of truth. Teach us to go out and see. Teach us to listen, not to entertain prejudices or draw hasty conclusions. Teach us to go where no one else will go to take the time needed to understand, to pay attention to the essentials, and not to be distracted by the superfluous, to distinguish deceptive appearances from the truth. Grant us the grace to recognize your dwelling places in our world and the honesty needed to tell others what we have seen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from through God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all the disciples and he was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he may, may make us shares in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and he gave it to the disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your Church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Let us pray to God our Father with confidence in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Father, I pray that they may be one as we also are one. Alleluia. Let us pray. Hear us, O Lord our Saviour, and grant us confidence that through these sacred mysteries there will be accomplished in the body of the whole Church what has already come to pass in Christ our Head, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.